Oh, test, test. Okay. So I found something today that is going to make rule books and Google Docs so much easier uh, to edit and write on the fly. Um, I just opened up a sample rule book. This is the rule book for uh, Psy Daisy. And I'm going to go to extensions and add ons. Get add ons. Search for the word icons. And this comes up, this flat icon. Uh, icons for slides and docs. There's other ones, but this one seems to be the uh, pretty good rated one, and I see free pick all the time when I'm doing Google searches for icons. They seem to have a big library, so I'm going to go like this. I'll click it. I'm going to click install. Hit continue. It's going to ask me what account. I'm going to use my school for a games account. Uh, I'm going to say continue. I'll let it have permission to look at all my stuff. And then it's going to install. Okay, and then it's going to show me how to use it, but I've already done this. So, what this does... Emily, why does this matter? Because there's a lot of times in rules where... I mean, people are going to read your rules when they first open up your game. They're also going to go back and scan your rules for what they need. So, it's often... Uh, useful to put icons in line like this when you're referring to a particular game specific term that somebody might not know you know like I've got these aphid symbols um, I've got these bugs I've got a, a symbol that says a bug of any color I've got one that says ladybugs I have one that says bees these are all things that I created separately as Google drawings like individually every little um, uh, bar and line and everything. I've also done it before where I've used emojis, which sometimes show up in Google Docs, sometimes they look different on different phones. Well, um, what this new extension is going to do is if I want to insert a symbol, uh, let's say I want to insert a flower here, um, I'm going to go to extensions, icons, because I just uh, installed that, I'm gonna go to start, and all I have to do up here is search for an icon. So uh, I found an icon. Let me just show you, though, what the search results look like. I can get all these flowers. Look, I made this icon. It's a pink flower. Look at all the different possible pink flowers that are here. Uh, 302 different flowers. So I can search for flower. I can search for pink flower. Another pink flower coming up. I can just search for flower. Now, some of these are emojis, and they're kind of like pre-colored. Other ones, if I select them, can actually select what color they are. I can even add a custom color. So let's see, I don't have the hex code, but let's say that looks pretty close to the color of my flowers in my game. Okay, I insert the icon. It pops right in there, in line, and close this out. I can go to image options. If it doesn't pop up automatically, you can click up here, and you can set the height. I use 0.15 a lot when because it just seems to be the right size. And bam! It goes right in there. Uh, let me put it in there. Boop. How cool is that? So um, this means that instead of having to do a bunch of graphics work, um, I can just simply, if I need to add an icon into my rule set, I can go, let's see if they have a leaf. Let's just try this. Icons, start. Let's search for a leaf. Look at all those leaves. Holy cow. And again, I can make it any color I want, or I can pick sort of a similar style. I could have picked a, a similar style um, to the flower I got. Um, I might, you know, want to customize it. I'll probably pick something like this. Just pick a color that sort of matches the green in my game. Again, I can get granular down to exactly what color I want this to be. I can insert it. And boo boo boo. Where'd it go? There it is. There it is. Oh, wait, where did it go? Let me delete that. That's okay. I might have screwed that up. Let me just back. Let's control Z that for a bit. Okay, let's do the flower. Start bring it up in my history, which is super useful. Let me just grab a green. I do wish it would save the color so I can insert it again. Oh, and you can select the size. Look at that. I didn't even notice that. Um, 
So let me say 16 point is pretty small enough. I think it's just going to insert where my cursor is. There you go. So you can go by points if you want it to kind of match your uh, font size. Or there we go. So rather than creating all these little icons from scratch, look how fast that works. So I'm going to leave these uh, as my custom icons because I've already done that. But I'm going to definitely be using this in new rules. Um, there's a lot of rule books I've been reading recently where they will say, like, um, you know, pick up the terrain tiles. And it's unclear what a terrain tile is. Maybe you have four different shapes of terrain tiles, or four different shapes of tiles in your game, and you want to point people directly to what that tile is. So, let's say that tile is a square. Bam. It's a square, sort of desert tile. I'm looking at you, Katie. Because <laughs> um, we just went through your terrain game. I can insert that. Boop. Now you have a symbol that represents that component in your game. You know, so like pick up five terrain tiles. Um, you know make a grid on the board. Let's say you've got nine of them. Make a three by three grid on the board. Now you could like organize the, uh, let's see, space tiles. Spaceship tiles by color. So let's say you have spaceships and your spaceships in your game are hexagons. I can search for hexagon. Ta da! And I can make it any color I want. This is so cool. Okay, so let's say we want it to look like this. And we want our spaceships to be purple. Or let's say this is the generic uh, hexagon color. Let's say that's what we use to refer to hexagons in our game, or to spaceships, sorry, in our game. And, oops, I should have clicked, clicked uh, 16 point. That's okay. So I'll go down. Spaceship tiles by color. Now, uh, maybe I want this one a little bit bigger because it seems like it's a little off center versus the other ones. Oops. Point one eight. Here we go. Now, the other thing is you can do this in a um, slide. So, if you wanted to make your whole setup diagram, you could go into icons for slides, and you could grab that exact same. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's insert a, a new Google drawing. And oh no, it won't work with drawings, I guess. But it'll work with slides. So, icons for slides. Let's do hexagon again. So again, you could create all these things in Photoshop if you wanted to, uh, but if you're talking about making an MVP version of your game and getting something out quick for, you know, blind or cold playtesting, this just seems so cool. I've got that set for the small size, but I can make it as big as I want. Let me see. Oh, it's only going to import the resolution I asked for, so maybe best practice to insert a big one, and then you can always reduce the size. Yep, so there's a lesson learned. So then I could actually lay out my map. Like, I'm on my way, no graphics abilities whatsoever. I'm on my way to creating a useful setup diagram. And maybe let's say your rules say we want to put the purple spaceship in the middle. Insert. I now have a purple spaceship in the middle. Now, mm, I can save that as, make a copy, can I save it? I guess I could download it as a, a PNG and then upload it into my rules if I wanted to, unless there's a way. Insert image. 
sorry, let me just see if it comes up. No, it won't come up that way. Maybe that's asking for too much. But let's just download as a PNG. We'll just call it spaceship. And then insert image upload. Desktop. Spaceship. Where are you? There you are. Bam. I have a setup diagram. Now, I can't edit that diagram like I would in Google Drawing. I typically like to do Google Drawings. Let's just see. I can. Okay, so look at this. You can use this in Google Drawing, so even better. Far superior, in my opinion, to creating your setup diagram that way. Is you can create your setup diagram here in Google Drawings. I'm just going to throw this, slap this together. Um, now, I do have to kind of go out uh, and go back to this to get my purple tile. But maybe the best way is to kind of create all the tiles you think you're going to need. Sorry, not tiles. Um, icons you need. Just kind of create like a document with a bank of them. Or like put it on the last page of your rules so you can always copy paste them. So, bum. And I could scale that exactly to the size I wanted if I wanted to. Save and close. Okay, now I have a setup diagram in my Google Doc that you know, talks to my rules. It's a little too big for the canvas here. Let me move it up. I can insert insert a cool caption here. I can make that italics. I could even put the caption in the. I like to have it outside the Google Drive because then it stays a consistent text size. But you could put it right in here if you wanted to. Now there's your setup diagram. You can make it big or small, you can move it around, you can do all kinds of different stuff to it. Um, and if you've got a problem, oh, you know what, my spaceship tiles are now um, orange, maybe. Then I can just grab another icon, put it in there, or maybe I want a terrain tile. Oh, Katie's getting me going there. Uh, I can grab a terrain tile and put it in there. Again, I think uh, I've just learned I would import all of them as 128 pixels, and then you can always make them smaller you can adjust this. So let's say we want to uh, make a setup diagram and like that's the starting position of that orange thing and I can just copy it and say after the first move they've moved it you know two spaces counterclockwise. Look how fast I'm putting together a functioning rule book with graphics now that I have this icon and slides for docs. So I'm going to pop a link to um, this add-on, I guess it's called, add-on plugin, add-on for Google Docs. But you can just, uh, again, go to add-ons, get add-ons, and then search for the word icons. And it comes up Oops. from flat icon right there. So I hope that tool is helpful for folks who are putting together rule books for contests, for pitching, for... Uh, you know, early prototyping for self-publishing. I think this is going to be a really useful tool. I imagine that I'm going to be using this a lot now. So hopefully this is helpful. For more tips and tricks, check out the Small Furry Games Discord server. I'll put that in link in the uh, description here too. And uh, yeah, join us for rulebook read-throughs on Saturday mornings where we go through rulebooks and critique them and see if we can learn the games just from the rulebooks and help designers improve. And uh, yeah, keep on making great games. Stay in touch. Bye.